welcome to this uh, series of lectures on marine hydrodynamics. In the last class we have talked about Zukowski transformation when we have started with the conformal mapping and uh, Zukowski transformation is one of the very important transformation which plays a very significant role in analyzing several problems as I mentioned out of the various uh, problems will be analyzed today we will concentrate on flow past an elliptic cylinder. How we will use the Zukowski transformation to study the flow past an elliptic cylinder from that of a flow past of an a circular cylinder. So, to do that first let us concentrate on what is the elliptic coordinate system. Once we are clear about elliptic coordinate system then it will be very helpful because we have already known that th by Zukowski transformation a point on the circle can be related to a point on the ellipse and again from a point outside a circular cylinder uh, outside an elliptic ellipse we can always relate to a point outside a circle. So, this concept will be utilized in this uh, lecture today to analyze the flow past an elliptic cylinder. Let us see how it works. So, so before going to let us think of what is the elliptic coordinate system. So, in this suppose I say zeta is equal to c cos hyperbolic z, where my zeta I will say my zeta is i plus ieta and my z is x plus i y. So, then what will happen this if I substitute for which implies my zeta is i plus ieta and that is a c into cos hyperbolic z is x plus i y. If I simplify this that will give me c cos hyperbolic x into cos hyperbolic i y plus i times sin hyperbolic rather call it sin hyperbolic x into sin y ok which can be written as ok this I can put it as c cos hyperbolic x into cos y plus i sin hyperbolic x into sin y and if I write this if I relate the real and imaginary points I will get my zeta is c cos hyperbolic x into cos y and my eta will be c so there is a i c i c c sin hyperbolic x into sin y and from itself if I write I can write the j is equal to a cos cos y eta is equal to b sin y then my a and b are c cos hyperbolic x and my b will be c sorry c times sin hyperbolic x. So, from this I can always get j square by a square plus j square by b square is 1 because this j square by a square is cos square by j square by b square is sin square by so this together is 1. So, that means, so this through this transformation also I have seen I can get if z is any point on a circle I can get the zeta plane any points on ellipse and this coordinate system I call this as the elliptic coordinate system. So, for any point on a circle the square this is 
eta square this is not the square this is eta square. So, now what will happen here if I look at a square minus b square a is c cos hyperbolic so c square cos hyperbolic square x minus sin hyperbolic square x and that is what you got c square. So, as usual we have seen a square minus b square is c square if a b are the semi major and minor axis then we have seen because the c point c c 0 and minus c 0 they are the focus of the ellipse. If I just say again if x not is a fixed point if x is equal to x not is fixed if the point is fixed that means I can get a is equal to c cos hyperbolic x naught and p is equal to c sin hyperbolic x naught. So, they become fixed point and they are constants instead of variable now they become constant once uh, a and c are a and b are known because c is known then what will happen to a plus b a plus b is a c cos hyperbolic x naught plus c sin hyperbolic x naught which gives c cos hyperbolic x naught plus sin hyperbolic x naught and that will give me that it will be e to the power x naught plus c to the minus x naught by 2 here it will give me c e to the power x x naught. In a similar manner, if I look at what will happen to a minus b, a minus b will be again c cos hyperbolic x naught minus c sin hyperbolic x naught. We can easily see that it becomes c e to the minus x naught. Hence, <laughs> what will happen because in my pre previous class I was talking about elliptic coordinate what will happen xi plus xi square minus c square this will give me because I have taken xi is equal to c cos hyperbolic z. So, this will be c cos hyperbolic z plus c square cos hyperbolic square z minus c square and that will give me c cos hyperbolic z plus this will give me c sin hyperbolic z. From the previous expression I can always get c e to the power z. Similarly, if I say xi minus this will be again give I can easily get c cos hyperbolic z minus c sin hyperbolic z and that will give me c e to the power minus z because it is obvious from here. Hence, at x is equal to x naught x naught on the ellipse we have what will happen to a plus b we have already seen a plus b is c e to the power x naught and a minus b is equal to c e to the minus x naught and uh, we have also seen this is one thing and we also we have seen a square minus b square is equal to c square these are relations will be th these are the things which will be very helpful for us in questioning further basically when we will talk about wave past at elliptic cylinder. With this understanding and the elliptic coordinate system now we will go to the wave past an elliptic cylinder sorry flow past an elliptic cylinder not. So, now we will discuss about the uniform flow. Uh, 
slash ten. Uniform club passed on elliptic cylinder. So, to do that, all of us know that if I have a uniform flow, if I have a uniform stream, which makes an angle alpha, uniform stream, which makes an angle alpha with the x axis, then the uniform flow past a circular then the flow past a circular cylinder is given by W z equal to u z e to the minus i alpha plus a plus b because a plus b is the in this con in the context of the elliptic cylinder I am considering a plus b by 2 is the radius of the cylinder. I alpha by 4 z because this becomes u z e to the i alpha plus u again u a square by z this is by circle theorem by circle theorem a plus b by 2 the radius of the circle. the radius of the circle and this is the radius of the circular cylinder. So, W z. So, this gives us a uniform flow past a circular cylinder. Now, we know that the transformation zeta if I say z is equal to 1 by 2 zeta plus zeta square minus c square and this transformation the last class we have seen that this transformation transform relate any point outside a ellipse to any point outside a circle. Now, if I substitute for z in this in terms of zeta, then what will happen? I substitute for z in this this z if I substitute here, then what will happen to? So, I can get w zeta. W zeta will be giving me u that is u by 2 because there is a half this will give me zeta plus zeta square minus c square e to the power of minus i alpha then we have plus a plus b square e to the power i alpha divided by 4 already we have taken this will be u by 2 we have taken so it will give us ok by 4 there is a 4 here so it will get cancelled so it will be zeta plus minus e square so, this will give us this. Now, we have seen that uh, if I just relate to some of the previous results that I will write the expansion for zeta plus zeta square minus c square then this I can get because I have already done this algebra this will give me ok before that what I will do what will happen to 1 by zeta plus zeta square minus c square. This I can always write at 
जीटा माइनस जीटा स्क्वायर माइनस सी स्क्वायर बाई जीटा स्क्वायर माइनस जीटा स्क्वायर माइनस सी स्क्वायर दैट उल बी बाई सी स्क्वायर सो आई सब्सटिट्यूट दिस फॉर दिस वैल्यू इफ आई से दिस इज ए दिस इज बी इफ आई सब्सटिट्यूट फॉर बी फॉर दिस वैल्यू इन द रिलेशन फ्रॉम बी इन ए देन व्हाट विल हैपन टू माइंस एट डब्ल्यू जीटा डब्ल्यू जीटा विल गिव मी यू बाय टू दिस विल गिव मी and we all know that again c square is nothing but a square minus b square so i substitute it here so i'll get zeta plus zeta square minus c square into e to the power minus i alpha plus a plus b square by a minus b square and this is because this is by c square and then so this will give me zeta minus zeta square minus c square so this gives me u by 2 into if i just say a plus b common i'll have e to the power minus i alpha zeta plus zeta square minus c square divided by if i say plus b this will give me a plus b minus rather plus and there is a e to the power minus i alpha will be there plus i alpha will be there so that will give us a plus b okay so c square is because c square is a plus b square So this is uh, z plus e to the i alpha. Okay, e to the power i alpha into zeta. Okay, zeta. Um, this will give me minus zeta square minus c square divided by a minus b. Yes. ओके बिकॉज वी हैव टेकन ए प्लस बी का मन सो दिस विल गिव मी इट इज माय एस अल्फा अल्फा प्लस ए अल्फा अल्फा प्लस ए प्लस बी होल स्क्वायर देयर इज ए प्लस माइनस ओके आई विल सी दैट So this will give me u by two. Here I have a plus b square by a minus b square e to the power i alpha, and here I I have taken w zeta. This will give us. And we have seen that a plus b is a c to the minus x naught. Just a minute. It is by alpha. Okay. So we'll see that this is a plus b into 
to the power minus i alpha. C square is by C square, so a plus b by a. Okay. So, let us see e to the minus i alpha into c e to the power z. We can write it divided by c into e to the power x naught because a plus b a plus b is c e to the power x naught and zeta into zeta square minus c square is c times e to the power z. Okay. So, plus if I put e to the power i alpha, this is again c e to the power minus z by c e to the power x naught minus x naught. So, there is okay, I will see that only make a correction. So, if this is the sorry. This is, and then with this only, because this is a little complex calculation, u by two into a plus b. So you will have e to the power. So we have already c c get cancelled, so we will get e to the power z minus x naught minus i alpha plus e to the power minus z plus x naught plus i alpha and this is we can always write it as u by 2 into a plus b into this one give us 2 cos hyperbolic z minus x naught z minus x naught z minus x naught minus i alpha ok. So, if this is the z minus i ok this becomes this. So, what does this represents? and this is my w zeta, where my zeta is c cos hyperbolic z and a is equal to c cos hyperbolic x naught, b is equal to c sin hyperbolic x naught and again we have seen that c square is a square minus b square and this is what the represents the complex velocity potential for the flow because we started with what we have done we had the circle theorem now we substitute for z in terms of a zeta because each point in the circle ellipse outside the circle or outside the ellipse will re relate to one point outside the circle and in the process we got w zeta in this form and this form is the complex velocity potential for the probe 2 star gives the complex velocity potential of the uniform flow passed on elliptic cylinder. Now, what will happen if I say z is equal to x naught? If I say z is equal to x naught, then w zeta will be u a plus b that will be cos. Rather, I will say 
if I put x is equal to x naught. So, this will give me cos z is x plus i y x plus i y minus x naught minus i alpha and that will be u a plus b because x naught x naught will get cancelled. So, this is cos hyperbolic this will be cos y minus alpha So, this represents if this I say that that means if I w z is phi plus i psi that is cos y minus alpha that means psi is equal to 0 and this will give me a streamline that will give me a streamline psi is equal to 0 is a streamline and this streamline I call this as a the line where psi is equal to 0 the streamline is called a dividing streamline it is a basically a line which divides the flow because since psi is equal to 0 is a streamline there will not be any flow across this line and hence this line is called a line which divides the flow and is called a thus a dividing thus called thus called a dividing straight line. This is called a dividing streamline. On the other hand, what will happen to W j? If you look at the general form, that is phi plus i psi in terms of, so you have u into a plus b, we have already that was cos hyperbolic z minus x naught minus i alpha, which can be written as u into a plus b into cos hyperbolic x minus x naught cos hyperbolic x into x naught into cos y minus alpha plus i times sin hyperbolic x minus x naught into sin y minus alpha and this implies if I relate phi and psi then my psi will be sin hyperbolic rather it will come as u into a plus b into sin hyperbolic x minus x naught into sin y minus alpha. Hence and if the psi is constant if psi is equal to 0 then again if I say psi is equal to 0 is a dividing streamline then in this case this will give me sin hyperbolic x minus x naught is 0 and sin y minus alpha is 0. If this is 0 means x is equal to x naught which we have seen that this is acts as a dividing streamline and again sin y minus alpha is 0 which gives y is equal to alpha or phi plus alpha. So, that means these are the dividing streamlines. So, if I look at a flow if I look at a flow let me look at a cylinder this is the x axis and because my flow is making an angle with alpha then this is the direction in which the fluid is flowing and this line so how the flow will be
so this is the way the fluid will be flowing and this is the w is equal to u a plus b and this angle is alpha this is the angle in which the fluid is flowing this is the direction of flow u a plus b into cos hyperbolic z minus x naught minus i alpha where alpha is the angle of inclination and this is in the data plane so this is the now with this uh, what will happen to if there is any stagnation point because when we are discussing a flow we need to know whether there is any stagnation so what will happen to d w by d zeta if you do that we have d w by d z into d z by d d z and it can be seen that this is nothing but u into a plus b sin hyperbolic z minus x naught minus i alpha divided by d zeta by d z and this again d zeta by d z if you substitute for this so u into a plus b so in hyperbolic and minus x naught minus i alpha we will see that this is by c sin hyperbolic z because zeta is a c cos hyperbolic z so d zeta by d z will give you a c sin hyperbolic z hence at the stagnation point if i have a stagnation point if d w by d zeta is 0 i have a flow stagnation point that gives me because this is i hyperbolic so that will give me z minus which implies z minus x naught minus i alpha is 0 and that gives me either it can be 0 or it can be i pi and if this gives me if this is 0 that means my z minus x is equal to z is x plus i y x plus i y minus x naught minus i alpha that is 0 or i pi so which implies my x can be x naught y can be alpha and again y can be alpha plus pi so these are the point for which d w by dz is digitized 0 and then that will represent the stagnation point so that means there will not be any flow across these points <laughs> Now again we know if you want to know the speed my q square is will be d w by d zeta d w bar by d zeta bar. So it can be easily seen that if I can substitute for d w by d zeta then I can easily see that I lay because my w is given by because we have the w u into a plus b u a plus b cos hyperbolic z minus x naught minus i alpha so it gives me my d q square will give me from this i can easily get q square is u square into a plus b whole square by c square and not going to i am just giving the compact form this gives me sin hyperbolic square x minus x naught plus sin square y minus alpha this is just mere sum of the algebra which you can do it sin hyperbolic square x plus sin square y so this will give me my q square <coughs> now since uh, 
can be easily seen that it can be found at sin hyperbola square x plus sin square y in not equal to 0 because x is equal to 0 only at focus there is no hair so in the process this should not be 0 and then so this if this gives the q then how to find the pressure if i go to bernoulli's equation from bernoulli's equation we can find the pressure distribution on the elliptic cylinder this can be obtained and that what will do if I assume pi as the pressure at infinity pi is the pressure at infinity of the flow and if I say because we have seen that this is the uniform flow first in el elliptic cylinder. So, use the fluid velocity at infinity because we all know from the when I have defined this conformal mapping I have seen that uh, from this it is obvious zeta is equal to z plus c square by 4 z for z we have seen that when z is at large distance zeta is z. So, whether it is a so the point in the zeta plane is same as the point in the z plane. So, at an infinity the fluid pressure is fluid velocity remains u both in the case of a cylinder as well as in the case of a circular cylinder as well as in the case of a elliptic cylinder. So, if you pass the pressure at infinity and use the fluid velocity at infinity because that we have started with that fluid velocity at infinity because we have even pump flow hence at any point on the fluid if you apply this. So, I will have on the surface of the cylinder if p by rho plus half q square is equal to u square by 2 plus pi by rho that is what Bernoulli's equation gives. And we know u square this is known this is known. So, we can always get p by rho plus half and that is q square is nothing what we have seen that q square is uh, u square into a plus b by a minus b square because uh, c square is a minus b c is uh, a plus b by by a minus b because c square is a minus b square. So, we have already that will give us a plus b by a minus b into 1 minus cos 2 into y minus alpha by 1 plus by cos hyperbolic to x naught minus cos to y naught. Cos to y sorry rather I will put it this is into sin hyperbolic square x minus x naught plus sin square y minus alpha divided by sin hyperbolic square 
x plus sin square y. So, this I if I put at x is equal to x naught then p by rho at any point on the cylinder p by rho plus half this is equal to u square by 2 plus pi by rho. So, that is u square into a plus b by a minus b although little algebra, but things are very interesting and this if I say x is equal to x naught then I can easily get at x is equal to x naught means this will be 0 and this is sin square. So, I can always put it 1 minus cos 2 into y minus alpha and then this will give me sin hyperbolic square x naught plus sin square y. So, I can put it in the hyperbolic this will be cos hyperbolic 2 x naught minus cos 2 y so, at x is equal to x naught and this is equal to u square by 2 plus pi by rho. Now, if this is the pressure at any point on the at x is equal to x naught. on the cylinder. Then if that is the case then what will be the minimum pressure? To obtain the minimum pressure we have to say d p by d y is 0 because we have seen that pressure is a function of y. So, if we say d p by d y is 0 that means d by d y of 1 minus cos 2 into y minus alpha other things are constant divided by cos hyperbolic 2 x naught minus cos 2 y this is 0 and once this is 0 if we simplify we can easily see a little length the algebra, but we can easily see that that will give us sin of y minus alpha into cross hyperbolic 2 x naught into cos y minus alpha minus cos y plus alpha and this is equal to 0 which implies there is a chance that sin y minus alpha is 0 ok. So, if y minus alpha is 0 or pi 0 it can be 0 or pi and another chance is that that means y is equal to alpha or alpha plus pi. So, and again at these are the points where the pressure can attain the minimum and further we have seen that these two points are the stagnation points in the flow sorry this is the dp by dy it gives me the maximum pressure it can be checked maximum slash minimum pressure and it can be checked at this point gives me the maximum pressure and we have seen that these are the stagnation point just my so these are the stagnation point in the flow and here the pressure has become maximum now, if you look at the right side as 0, the other part as 0. So, at this point the pressure is maximum and you have seen that in case of a circular cylinder also near the stagnation point we have seen the maximum pressure and there. Now, with this we will see what happen at the if this part is 0. If the right side is 0, then we have cos hyperbolic 2 x naught into cos y minus alpha is equal to cos y plus alpha. If this becomes and this will yield will give the point of minimum pressure.
this will give the point of minimum pressure and uh, we can see that if you simplify this we can cos y plus alpha by cos y minus alpha that will give us cos hyperbolic 2 x naught and of which we can rewrite as 1 minus cos hyperbolic 2 x naught a little algebra by 1 plus cos hyperbolic 2 x naught that will give us cos y plus alpha minus cos y minus alpha divided by and if you look at this again it will give me sin hyperbolic square 2 x naught sin hyperbolic square x naught sorry cos hyperbolic square x naught and that will give you sin y by cos y into sin alpha by cos alpha and then that is tan y into tan alpha equal to there is a minus sign minus tan hyperbolic square x naught and that we can see that it is minus b square by a square so we can see that tangent which uh, now further if you put tan alpha so again by substituting for tan alpha So, if I call this 2 star or let me call it 3 star. So, if you substitute for this expression in my previous expression for the pressure distribution, what I will obtain? I will obtain by minimum pressure pressure can be obtained pi plus 1 by 2 rho u square into 1 minus a plus b square in the pressure distribution if I substitute for this value then it will give me cos square alpha by a square plus sin square alpha by b square. Hence, if this is the pre minimum pressure p will be this p minimum. So, if I have to have I say that there is a no commutation as I have mentioned if there is no cavitation that means I should have pi must be greater than there is no cavitation means this should be greater than 0 this term p minus pi p this has to be greater than 0 and that means my pi has to be greater than a plus b square cos square alpha by a square plus sin square alpha by b square minus 1 oh sorry there is a rho u square sorry this is not the right a plus b square into rho u square by 2. So, now with this I will get the no cavitation criteria. Once I have no, no cavitation that means I understand that uh, I obtain the pressure, I obtain the minimum pressure 
and also I obtained the criteria for no cavitation. So, the flow past the elliptic cylinder is thoroughly understood. Now, what will happen? If I have to analyze the flow past a flat plate, then what I will do? Because I know the flow past a cylinder, and to understand the flow past a plate, I just put set b is equal to 0. If I put b is equal to 0, because I have a ellipse, this is my major axis is a, minor axis is b. So, if I put b is equal to 0, so this will reduce to a flat plate. Hence, in this case, you will be c and uh, so the flow past a cylinder, un, uh, sorry, flow past a plate, uniform plate, rather if I say that the plate uh, wave is, uh, sorry, the flow is uh, uniform flow, which makes an angle, u which makes an angle. alpha with x axis, then if I have a cylinder sorry if I have a plate, then the flow past a plate will be w zeta and that will give you a cos hyperbolic z minus i alpha, because x naught will be 0 here and z will be. So, this will be the flow past a uniform flow past a plate and here that means if I have a plate, I have a fluid is moving like this. So, this is the direction of flow and again in the same way here also we will see that the point y is equal to alpha or y is equal to pi plus alpha they will represent the stagnation point, these are the stagnation points. And if alpha is pi by 2 in this one, if alpha is pi by 2, So, this also we can write it in the form w zeta is this. Okay, I think this is the final thing, we will leave it here. Then, if again I have to calculate the, we can easily, I am not going to the detail here today because we understood the flow past a cylinder and the calculate the pressure and uh, maybe in a similar manner if I apply the Blasius theorem I can calculate the that is forces acting on the cylinder as well as the I can apply the Blasius theorem and calculate the forces and moments on the elliptic cylinder. and the plate. This is a very straight plot because we know dw, we know w. So, we can find dw by dz and we can apply directly the Blasius theorem and Cauchy residue theorem. So, we can calculate the force and moment distortion on the cylinder. So, with this uh, we have uh, although the technical details are a little tedious, but we have seen that how the flow past a elliptic cylinder and flow past a finite plate uniform flow basically can be the solution can be obtained we can calculate the pressure the velocity the forces and movement acting in the cylinder and this is uh, so the Zukowski the importance of the Zukowski transformation is clear from this example because otherwise it would have been very difficult to calculate the flow past a elliptic cylinder. However, we are because of the Zukowski transformation we are able to do it in a very simplified manner there is a little complex basically the algebra is tedious, but the method is very simple and with this uh, today I will stop next time we will look at how 
you can calculate some more analyze more problems related to the elliptic cylinder and then we will go to look into hydrofoil and other complex flow patterns again based on the Jupiter's transformation. Thank you.